I mean, it transcends party lines, though. I mean, you know, you got to, you got to, I mean, Gavin definitely did a great job. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, we're all, everybody here, we're pretty homogenous out here, at least like yeah. in Los Angeles, not California necessarily in general, but, you know, the California way, we're pretty liberal out here. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, I certainly stand for him. It's just, there's a lot of corruption, obviously, like there isn't any government. Always. Not, not with him to get, not with him necessarily, but. Jerry Brown did some, and Jerry Brown not not corrupt either, but uh, or I mean, what do I know? But he made some decisions that seemed questionable in terms of ready preparedness for this situation out here. So having there been some interesting choices made, they've like really stayed on top of it. Yeah. Don't tell that to the lady who walked by me on my walk today. I made it pretty good over a couple months without anybody trying to just like get in my shit. But I had Shanklin and the dog, the stroller, like the whole thing, and. Oh boy. She just went right like she had on the sidewalk. It was like, I would have been out, even with all that, I would have went out of the way. But like, first, I feel like the right to the sidewalk is mine in that scenario. Yeah, like, dude. I get dog and stroller right, or not dog, <laughs> dog is anything, but stroller, I get yeah. the stroller rights. And on top of it, I'm walking the dog too. So like, give me a fucking break. But just like, ducked her head and went by. And I just like, I wish I would have went <coughs> <coughs> like when yeah. she went by, but I didn't think of that until afterwards. Or, or you do like a fake out, like you're like blown by by her, by uh, a route she was. <laughs> yeah. He's like, did, whoa. I, I did. I just, I said, I just went, excuse me. Like, <laughs> and I like, I like went into the grass, like, like, <laughs> like exaggerated six feet. Like, <laughs> you should have fallen. My baby. My kid. Yeah, I should have fallen. That was as well. <laughs> Okay, hey, what's up, yeah. guys? I what's like that up, PVP. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Well, Malik, man, pleasure. Thank you again for coming on. Um, again, Trevor, um, I, with these guys, just kind of put our heads together and, you know, given everything that's going on in terms of people on lockdown, not able to go out, social distancing and everything else that's going on, we wanted to do something positive. And, you know, I've been friends with these guys, good friends with these guys from the time we stepped in until, until we left. And uh, even those yeah. funny stick freed stories I was telling you before, you know, that kept us you know, even closer as, you know, we graduated and since we've left. And we wanted to be the force for good. We wanted to tell some really cool stories, get some cool people on and just uh, shed a light on what the, the folks from Notre Dame are doing and, uh, you know, put some smiles on people's faces. Yeah, man, that's that's super cool to what you guys are doing. I think especially at this time with with everything going on, it's it's cool to still reach out to you to people back at Notre Dame that you was had shared and similar stories with because it's good to have those feelings and the connection you can make now. I mean, everybody that goes to Notre Dame does something that uh is is unique in their own way and it's and it's still cool to see how you go from living in those two foot by two foot dorms to uh, being in some good positions to help uh, change a lot of what's going on around us. So yeah. it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. There you That's go. That's so true. And <laughs> your guys' dorms were very similar. Uh, also a Siegfried Rambler. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Ramblers, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nice. Uh, man, that was – those are some times we – did you, was Father John still there when you were when you were there? Is he still the Father man? John and Miss Ellen were still there. Nice. Uh, <laughs> we had the most competitive dorm, and I think it was the most central dorm now. I mean, before all the new stuff with the stadium and everything, right. because you know, right. Siegfried is right close to where the the facilities are, but also North Dining Hall and and my quad, and it's just a it's, just, it's a good spot to be in. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh man, I remember watching some football games, Siegfried versus Soren back in the day. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> like, this is gonna come up a lot on our show considering oh, who the hosts man. are. But man, that was—I mean, that was some fun times. We with we had our the, our mutual friend, this guy Pete, who was like, we swear he should have made he should have been the kicker that made the team. He, you know, they put on that honorary tryout every year. Yeah, <laughs> that dude had that dude had the the farthest field goal, the farthest punt. He he hit the he hit like six out of seven or something, and when he has kicking oh every year, he went in there and he dominated. Well, he only, I think he only tried out two times and he gave up eventually. But we always <laughs> were like we always were like this is for show. And then like the year after we left, they it was uh, 
who one of the Siegfried, I blank on the name, but there was a kicker out of Siegfried that Charlie Weiss finally signed up, right? Yeah. But <laughs> it really was a chance, so who knows? Yeah. It's the hidden gems in Siegfried, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. The hidden gem <laughs> talent. No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us tell us what you're up to tell us like tell us about you tell us where you're at tell us what you're doing we want to learn a little bit about you so man i'm actually in uh norwalk california i live with my girlfriend and uh you know I, I've, I've been able to be in uh crossover to the media real early from transitioning from my career and got an opportunity to work in the space called overtime which is a digital network service it was like ESPN of the younger generation because it was all cool. on the phone, social media, digital. Um, unfortunately, I don't, I'm not there because of the coronavirus crazy enough to see how it's been affecting uh, a lot of different things, but still I uh, have an opportunity to call games for CBS, which was uh, a really good chance and opportunity I got a, uh, a chance with through the guy at CBS is actually a Notre Dame, a big Notre Dame fan. So. Oh, um, you know, great to make a connection there and, and felt real comfortable calling games. And it, it, yeah, that experience was a little, a little crazier because you go from playing in the game to then you go to the TV copy and that's you in the TV copy in the booth <laughs> kind of uh, talking football. So it's like cool to see people like Tony Romo do it and then uh, be in the same company as him and see how it, uh, it translates really well. You can pick up on things. And Aaron Taylor actually got me really, really involved uh, and helped me a lot my first season calling games. And it just is a testament to how Notre Dame guys uh, help each other out and, and stick right. together because he really got me comfortable real early with the whole calling games process. So big ups to Aaron Taylor, you know, and it's yeah. interesting because he interviewed me. At, in, at Notre Dame doing like the football season one time. And All right. I was asking him a lot about it and come years later I ended up doing the same thing. So full circle. <laughs> another legend too. Another legend yeah. for sure. Legend, super legend. You know, as much wisdom as I could take from my uh, I definitely work on that and then follow from that you get different opportunities. I got a chance to do some radio with Sirius Sexy. I'm talking to ACC, so giving us a voice. Uh, in the ACC world because they just all about Clemson and it's, you know, oh, yeah. go back and forth yep. uh, with those guys. And then, um, and now just currently, you know, now that uh, everything going on, just trying to uh, study up and I've been taking some finance classes since I've been in quarantine and just trying to come out with uh, some business ideas, hopefully, and some things that uh, I've been working on while in this transition phase of the world, you know, everything. Yeah jump into a different realm so just trying to stay up on that and keep talking to alumni actually connected with the Notre Dame alumni that's also another inventor that had made a massager I'm going to show you he's made oh, a, nice there we go <laughs> yeah let's see he this. made a massage thing and it's uh <laughs> it looks like nice. a wheel it's like a wheel yeah yeah all right but it's a massager so you can put on your on your chair and in right. the car and it, has different settings, real easy to nice. use, and so there's another Notre Dame connection that we have even inventors in the in the world. <laughs> there you go. Well, it, it reminds me. It, you're reminding me of a mutual friend of all of ours. Um, we went to school with David Givens, uh, wide receiver, back in the day, and yep. man, that dude was an inventor himself. Uh, he, I got oh, that. I could, I could always, I could talk stories D Give forever, but. Uh, he had invented this resistance band training system back when he was playing for the Patriots. And oh, like the well, TB12 method before TB12. Yeah. Uh, Dave was influential back th back there. Wow. That guy is like an inventor himself. He's come up with a lot of stuff, honestly. And it's really sad because it's just one out of many stories where kind of the business deal went south and it wasn't his fault. And if someone taking advantage of an athlete, like different, yeah. different situations. And, and honestly, this one, they... I mean, you know, without – I got to be careful spreading stories or telling stories with getting in there, but this man – We'll, we'll cut this one. out. We'll cut this out. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> screw that. That's some part of the nature of the show is, like, you know, keeping it real. Well, you know? I mean, one of the original show ideas was – name ideas was when keeping it real goes right. So we got yeah. to our, stick to our morals. Yeah. But anyway, the, the Celtics started using it. Essentially what it was was it was hands-free resistance band training. So you put on a, a, a strap here, a strap here. 
strap on your ankles and a strap around your waist, you could get different level of resistance bands so you could run routes and you could do, you know, you could still practice and still get that resistance in there. And the Celtics started using it while he was out there. The Patriots started using it when he was out there. He got yeah. with some business people and started branding it. And like, I have some of the original DG fast bands is what it was. I even like, I have a wow. picture of that. I've got them in the closet somewhere because I kept them. And it turned out like the business contacts that he was working with ended up selling him down the river and they, Terrell Owens got interested in it and they, they like, they, of they course. cut Dave out of the deal and they, they got T.O. involved in it. And like, I think they're still out. I mean, this has been years now, but for a while it was like they hit the market as T.O.'s thing. And, it and was, they bankrupt him too? Yeah, right. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably took advantage of him too. Yeah, was, I mean, I was, I was talking a little bit with that thing and it was, one of, that was one of the things I was trying to dig into is, is the ownership thing. And so there was something shady going on with their business partners of like, Mm -hmm. yeah, like, they, like they had they had the ownership and uh they had kind of the control of it and if i remember what it was this dude and his wife baby and uh it was weird yeah so yeah, yeah definitely got to protect yourself in these uh in these things yeah, yeah you got to be careful especially but now especially it now reminds me of um of a story back in the uh, back in the dorms where you know he used to always throw everything you know did you have any any like did you guys do the throw and stuff like we had the lighter game is what ours was and you would throw the lighter and you catch on the back of your hand and we would like go to parties and like throw the lighter everywhere and everybody would get into it and like you know I don't want to take credit for all the hard work of on the football field and the practice field that goes in but I want to say that that <laughs> lighter game helped contribute to some of these extra hands that we, that these guys were. Tim, who else Julius Jones, uh, Javen Hunter like some of the receivers back in the day everybody was throwing those lighters around did you guys have any uh any traditions that you did to keep the keep your you know skills sharp off the field oh man we uh we always had different things that we did as like a team like an inside joke thing that we always had on the team whether it be wrestling with each other or just right. the camaraderie i feel like Notre Dame guys we always do like weird stuff to keep each other entertained especially in the summer when we're there and nobody's in south yeah. Bend, you know it's how big it'd be deserted at times oh yeah <laughs> we would actually uh go out and and uh and go camping and doing different things and just forest nature stuff but my one of my favorite memories especially staying in the dorm was our the first snow day and you know we go and do the the snowball fight in the middle of campus and i had just moved into school that week because i went to school early for the first time and right, right. you know there's so much commotion and this is in the dead of the nine months frozen tundra winter that you have in in South Bend and I'm trying to find out where my classes are and I just never forget when it was coming down everybody from the, the sick breed is in the middle you know the common room and everybody is just getting real hype getting bundled up I don't know what's going on so I'm just <laughs> following the pack and <laughs> we end up going out there like a war zone and went, and went as a group out to the, uh, the battlefield in the middle of God I mean the middle of South uh, South Campus, and we see Soren was like the other dude, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a standstill in the middle of the winter, middle of the night, and then this naked guy threw Soren just comes <laughs> right to the crowd, of course, and sets <laughs> off the snowball fight. And it was just, I it was the crazy. lacrosse guys and the the Soren guys, the only two people who get butt naked in the middle. Of <laughs> oh man, crazy times! But it was uh, ever since then, I had a really good time there. Uh, just yeah. going through the motion in those games. Nice. nice. And and how was the adversity that you faced there? Uh, how did that help shape you in terms of what you're doing now and how you transition through Florida into your post career? Oh man, you learn so much going through Notre Dame because you know it's not meant for everybody. I really believe that. And you know, but if you do make it, then you learn. To learn the, the way of how Notre Dame works, you can really uh, get through anything, in my opinion. And so uh, a lot of the things that you experience, you don't really have a, a game plan for it, but you learn how to manage yourself and how to leverage and take advantage of opportunities and always see the positive in things. When you're in an environment like that, because it's always, in, especially for athletes, is a high-stake position. Uh, you know, you're in high stakes all the time from 
inside media, outside media as well. It's just the function of doing both school in and work. So um, the guys that make it, I commend them. And what you just learn is just perseverance and you learn how to set yourself a routine and consistency. And, and things work out, man. You realize that it's not always as bad as you as you may receive it, but you continue to work through things and, and, and not quit. You know, things tend to work out. So, um, you know, going to Florida and, and things not being set up how I thought they were and then going through the things that we went through there and, and still being able to save good relationships, man. And those are what really has carried me, you know, in the transition of my next career is having good relationships with people we worked with that came into Notre Dame that remember me and, uh, you know, just stay in, stay in a good face, man. You never want to burn bridges and, and, and not have that, that, that good relationship back to the school that, you know, have done so much for you. So, yeah. uh, you know, always getting this stuff like this and staying and, and staying in the, in the relationship and reaching out to people because that's really what it's all about. And, you know, you, you get a lot from it. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Amen well that. said. Well said. That's inspirational stuff, man. That, <laughs> that kind of me and like, I don't know, man. I just love how zen you are. With, uh, <laughs> I haven't watched too many of those videos because I think I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm 40 years old now, you know? I mean, just, mm. just, just came across that stuff. It's hilarious. And like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Your whole vibe is awesome. Yeah, man, you got to keep the good vibes, man. The kids, man, yeah. kids are getting so much better these days. It's like, you, you just appreciate it. You know, you like yeah. seeing these kids when they blow up. So it's pretty cool. Speaking of kids, Joe Delaney was on our show uh, this past weekend. And uh, I've been working with him in, in a lot of capacity uh, in regards to help giving food uh, and collecting food, giving it back to the people in need. He has this program called Hit the Open Man, which is basically in the light of or in wake of the coronavirus and us not being mobile as we are, look for different ways to give back. He challenged me to get involved in different communities. How about this? How about we get you linked up with a group out in LA, Hit the Open Man, where we can help some kids in need and who really need it now? Yeah, let's get a part of it. Definitely right. do it. I'm going to get involved with it too, because I've been looking for more to a way to get involved in, uh, out here. And that's, was one of the things I had asked Joe and hoping he could help direct us. And we feel like we found a pretty good, a pretty good option out here uh, with, with what's going on. One of the bigger issues that seems to rise to the top is the amount of kids, the LA school, uh, public school system, kids that rely on meals every day. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's shocking when you see some of these numbers, I feel like, you know, I want to get the, the article to quote this properly, but it was something like a million kids in this town that, that are reliant on daily meals. And without that, they might be hungry. So we were looking at some good organizations that do some stuff in that way. We, we might try to uh, put something together. Perfect. I mean, we're definitely yeah. going to put something together, I should say. Uh, so when we air this segment, we'll make sure to flash that website on the bottom. And for those that are in the area, We'll, we'll help them get involved. And if that's something that you can share, that'd be awesome and appreciated. Gotta get, gotta, gotta, gotta get on that, man. It's important to help the kids, man. You know, if anything, teaching them good, good, good ways of, of managing during a time like this with proper foods, too. It's all about yeah. Yeah, the, true. the specific things, not just getting anything, you know. So, you know, nowadays anything cannot it can be bad for you, so you gotta find proper food to keep kids nourished in the time of food. Absolutely, I'm all about finding the silver linings right now too. I mean, I, it's it's you gotta be careful talking about that because obviously you don't want to gloss over like the the pain and stuff that people are dealing with. You know, that are being directly affected with it, and and I've been lucky so far to not have it quite directly affect me to that to that respect. And but in the way that it's it's kind of improved a lot of things in life where it's like whether you look at the environment or looking at like you said people reaching out and helping out where they might not have been inspired to do and do it without that or uh just like maybe getting closer with your family or like for us one of the specific examples that comes to mind is we're making orange juice we, we live in la and we got an orange tree in our yard i've lived in la since 2003 now you know and and 
we've been buying orange juice from the grocery store forever. And I just was like, we finally went out and picked the oranges and like squeezed the oranges and it was so much more delicious. And it's something that's so like obvious. That's just like, duh, but it, it, it's a simple little positive, you know? Simple little positive, man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, is there, do you have, before we wrap it up, I, I we want to make sure we, we don't go crazy because we could talk forever. And uh, as you can probably already tell, I could tell a million stories myself and we could, <laughs> we'd love to hear more stories from you. Um, and we're happy to anytime. And, and I also wanted to say, um, you know, if something comes up that you see something uh, charity wise that you're interested in, please let us know too, because we'd be happy to try to use this, hopefully this forum that we're building in order to help out the people that are going to come here and take their time to spend time with us too. So, you know, please keep us in mind as you, as you go on, if anything comes up and we'll be happy to help. Um, before we get out of here, are there any questions that you have for any of us? Oh man, I love what you guys are doing and any way I can continue to, like you said, with find the charities or just being involved, you know, I'm all here for it. Awesome, awesome. man. What are, you, uh, what are you doing out here in LA? Uh, you know, I, announcing is a, sounds like a big path and as a quarterback, uh, I feel like you're really probably one of the best people to be doing that because you can see the field so well and you learn how to read <laughs> these plays. And like you mentioned, Tony Romo, that's kind of like the direction that someone like yourself could take in that field. Are you doing other production stuff? Yeah, so I'm, I'm about to go back and uh, I'm signed with UTA. So I'm right, um, nice. working with them to do more uh, pop culture stuff and, and transition over to get a game show. Uh, or that's the that's the goal, kind of one of the things that we're trying to hit. And, and other than that, just, just staying in the, the media world is very new still. And, you know, I got in pretty hot. So looking to, to find my way through that and then make little business ventures off of that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a good start and we hope they stay hot. Nice, go. man. I, 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 you know, I've been out here grinding myself for a while and the grind never changes when you're, you know, whether, what side of the, whichever side of the camera you're on, it's like, I, I, you know, you hear these actors and they talk about like these Emmy or Academy Award winning actors and they're like, they're only as good as their last film. And you're like, yeah. come on, really? But then you just see it in action and, and, the thing that's so interesting is that it's not just the actors. It's pretty much everybody on those sets. And, and you yeah, gotta everybody. Go, you got to reinvent yourself every time that job ends and you got to keep grinding and keep going forward. And I'm sure mm -hmm. there's a million ways to compare that to, uh, to showing up every Saturday or Sunday on the football yeah. field or every day for practice or whatever yeah. too. But, preparation, uh, preparation every time. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool. I, lo I love that grind. It's a good grind. Yeah, yeah absolutely, man. So, Love, love, love watching you play in Notre Dame. I, I want to hear about uh, what's your favorite moment on the field? The, the, like when you remember back, you just like, you know brings you that like uh, I don't know that happiness, that zen. Oh man, my favorite, my favorite moment on the field. I think it was just uh, probably just getting able to to start for the first time, man, and and uh, I think it was just it was good for me to get a chance to, to, to feel that experience of starting for the first time when I played at um, LSU. But that first time I got on the field at USC um, toward the end of the season when, um, you know, we were – we played Florida State and we were, like, top five at that point. And, uh, you know, we fell off pretty hard. And that USC game when I got in and got to at least rally the guys – down the field in those three plays gave me that that confidence that I could really do it, and um, it gave me that that last push that I felt like okay, it's all making sense now, and because it was just hard getting to that point to, to start. So yeah. um, once I popped on the, the that first drive and we scored, it just um, I knew we was gonna win that championship the next year. It just it just yeah. had took a matter of time, and then end up getting hurt but that that was the, the moment I knew it was it was good to good spot to be in and last question we have this segment called over under and looking at the fridge or the kitchen behind you it looks like probably got a good stock over there <laughs> question how many bags of rice do you got over under <laughs> four bags of rice 
Oh man, we're uh, we're a lot over that one. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> we love our rice. <laughs> and we got quinoa. We got different types of rice too. We so gotta, there you go. We gotta start gambling on this segment. We gotta start taking <laughs> bets from the host or whatever. We've just been figuring out a different uh, different yeah. commodity people are storing up during the uh, the quarantine. Yeah. You know, and you said last question, but you know, how are you? How are you passing your time during the quarantine? And what what do you what do you got keeping you busy these days? Yeah, man. So I've been taking this finance class. I actually just learned about, right, uh, right. you know, being a banker and, and really just getting my business strategies together. I had a lot of things that I wanted to, to keep pushing, like this quarterback magazine that uh, we, okay. we got uh, created on Instagram. Um, it's got a pretty good following and we do camps every year. And it's just a way to try to connect the quarterback world. I think quarterbacks are more than just a sport. You can be a quarterback of your household, a quarterback of your job. You know, I think it's more of a lifestyle and um, trying to push developing the craft and love the craft that you're working on. You got to be a quarterback in your life. So, um, you know, just kind of a movement that I was putting together. And now we're trying to turn into a, a more of a business angle and, you know, just helping out other Notre Dame people. I got a lot of people, like teammates that I connect with. And, we stay pretty close. So, you know, it's 2020, man. Everything's a little different, but we can, we can adjust and keep moving forward. Yeah. Do you want, do you, is there a certain place that you want to send people to that Instagram account or anything? Uh, we could send our audience to that page if you want to give out the tag. Yeah, it's just Quarterback Magazine on, on Instagram or right. you can follow my page, just uh, Malik Zaire on Instagram, Overtime Malik. And, you know, we can we can make some things happen. It's all about unity, man. There you go. Awesome. Cool. All no, right. Well, we won't take up any more of your time on this night. We really appreciate you uh, you taking time out of your night to to talk with us, and uh, we look forward to uh, hopefully bringing you back on, making you a recurring part of the show. Sometimes, you know, get you back on here, get some updates and stuff. Yeah, bring me back on, man. I appreciate you guys even reaching out to me, man. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I Thank you so much, Malik, man. Thank I'm you so much. Thanks. Uh, thanks, guys. Likewise. Take uh, care. Go yeah. Irish. Go Irish. <laughs>